Chris, and welcome to Popcorn Finance. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well and welcome back to Popcorn Finance where we discuss the finance issues that we all deal with and about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. Today is day five in our week-long discussion on debt and I'm very happy to say that we have a special guest on today's show. Jamila from JourneyToLaunch.com will be joining us for a special segment. When I first came across Jamila and JourneyToLaunch.com, I read her story and saw that her goal was to retire in her 40s. And her and her husband had made big steps towards this goal by saving over $85,000 in one year. Because of this and all of the great information and educational tools on Jamila's website, I knew that she would add a very knowledgeable and intelligent perspective to our discussion this week. So as always, thanks for taking some time out of your day to listen, and please enjoy my interview with Jamila from JourneyToLaunch.com. Okay, so I'm joined here today uh, by Jamila from JourneyToLaunch.com. Uh, hey, Jamila, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good. And I just want to say thanks for uh, just giving me a little bit of your time today to uh, just kind of talk to you and ask you a few questions. Sure. It's my pleasure. And I had actually first heard of you and Journey to Launch through uh, Instagram. I was kind of going through uh, looking for other people who were interested in personal finance, and I came across your profile, and you were kind of liked a lot of things you were posting, and I decided to check out your website, and I was really interested in your story, uh, especially the part where you, you and your husband saved over $85,000 in a year, and your plan to retire by the age of 40, which that really had me interested. And so... um I kind of just wanted to ask you if you could tell me a little bit about uh, JourneyToLaunch.com. Sure. sure. Um, so JourneyToLaunch.com, I initially started it just to chronicle my journey to financial freedom. And so just to step back a little bit, I my goal is I would like to retire from my job in six years or less, meaning I want to be able to accumulate enough wealth and finances and investments to be able to live off of that. And my husband, um, who will still work, will be, you know, he's still, he's a part of the plan. (laughs) But the way it worked is that in six years, I'd like to have the option to leave my job. Um, So that meant that I would have to, from now until then, really optimize my finances. We would have to make some changes so that we can start saving and investing more to be able to hit that goal. So I started Journey to Launch to, as a platform to chronicle that journey, and then also to be accountable um, to myself. So I, when I initially did it, it was more just, I'm going to, you know, put this out there, and then that means I have to do it. But what started to happen was people, you know, started to read my story, and they got interested, and it morphed more into being able to help others also reach their dreams of financial freedom. And so, so now it's more of a platform that basically also not only helps me to reach that goal, it helps inspire and help other people to do that too. That's that's a really cool story because – it for sure was inspiring to me to see that because I'd never even kind of thought about the idea of, you know, retiring earlier, you know, you kind of get stuck into the idea of you got to wait till you know, you're 60 and you run the, you know, the, the typical narrative of what it looks like to work and then retire when you're, you know, much older. So it was definitely inspiring to hear that story. Yeah. It's actually one of the things I'd like to, you know, inspire more in people because I know that there's this thing about, you know, most people think they need to work until, you know, they're older or some people even have it in their head that they have to work like forever. And if you enjoy your job and you love what you do, yeah, you should work and you should continue to work. And even like the thought of retirement, it doesn't mean that I'm saying like once I reach 40, I'm just going to like go lay on the beach and do nothing. Right. Like Mm -hmm. I still want to be a productive member of member of society. I still want to to bring something to the world. So I still will work, but it will be like what I choose to do and what I want to do. Um, if, you know, on my terms and on on my time. And also I wanted to kind of break the stigma of that you needed to like start a business or become like some crazy successful entrepreneur to be able to do it. Now, while I have now journey to launch as a business and hopefully it will help elevate me to reach this goal quicker, I want to show that you don't necessarily have to be born into money or create like some super mega entrepreneurship company that helps you do it. If you are working um, in a regular job, you can possibly like, you can do this still, right? Like, everybody, everybody can have the chance to reach financial freedom. 
Oh, that's really cool. That's, I think that yeah. that's a really good point because I think a, a lot of the stuff you see out there is you have to come up with this, this some type of business or this crazy idea to make all this extra money, and that's going to kind of set you free versus it sounds like you're more just working hard and really focusing on saving and investing to get to that point. Right. Like, I focus on, like, the equation. Now, I mean, obviously, like, if you do become an entrepreneur or you start start a side hustle in addition to your job and you're able to bring in more money, that's going to help you, you know, elevate or make your journey. Um, it can it can make it quicker, right, to reach your goals. Mm-hmm. So it's not that I'm saying, like, don't worry, don't focus on that. But, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can go about reaching financial freedom and improving your finances. You know, you increase your income. You know, you make as much money as you can, whether that's through extra jobs or extra hours or getting another degree, and that helps you become more marketable in the, in the workforce or starting your business. And then you have the expenses side where, let's say, maybe you can't increase your income, you're at a you're at a ceiling, then you look at your expenses and maybe you, you try to decrease them as much as possible or you look at ways of refining it. And then the difference between that is what you use to then get ahead. So whether that's paying off debt, starting to invest, that difference is kind of what you use to then reach your goals. No, oh, gotcha. Okay. Oh, perfect. And um, I also wanted to ask you, um, your website, Journey to Launch, where did you come up with that name? <laughs> um, well, it's funny because it took me a while to think of it, but I was thinking that, you know, I'm on a journey <laughs> and I'm looking to launch to financial freedom and it kind of just came together. So I just started, I just decided with the name Journey to Launch. Well, because it, it, it has a really nice ring to it. It's very catchy, easy to remember. So I was kind of interested in where that, uh, where that came from. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, and this week um, on the the show we're doing here at Popcorn Finance, we were focusing on debt. And um, I actually went back and I listened to, I think it was one of your first interviews on the uh, His and Her Money podcast. Yeah. And uh, on there, uh, you were d- discussing paying off over $50,000 in debt. And um, I just want to kind of ask you um, about, about your experience with debt, what your like, kind of like relationship with it is in the past, and kind of how it felt to finally, you know, get rid of that. Right. So, um so luckily for me, um, I did not – I graduated from school with about, like, $20,000 worth of student loan debt, and my husband had some debt, but he luckily – he got – he was a basketball player, so he got basically, like, a full ride through school. So he didn't really have much uh, student loan debt. He did graduate with some graduate loan debt, but for the most part, we were lucky because I know a lot of people graduate with a ton of more student loan debt than we do. We did. And so we had that debt, and then we had the debt um, on my my property that I bought at 22. We had um, home ec- I had a home equity line on that, so I consider that part of the debt. And then a little credit card debt here and there, but our, luckily our credit cards were never out of control. And so when we graduated, we had those like major debts to focus on. And you know, I really I really always practiced like the idea of like not overspending on credit cards, which helped me in general just control the debt, right? And so I was able to focus on the student loan debt and then the home equity line um, as the debts I needed to pay off uh, when I graduated um, from college. And that's how I – so I I was able to focus on that, control my spending, and um, make a way where we were able to pay all that off, which felt really good. (laughs) So now we don't don't have any debt other than our primary mortgage and then the mortgage on the investment property. Oh, nice. And how long would you say your like your your journey or your period of time to pay off the debt? Because I think a lot of people get um, kind of like the mindset that, you know, you're going to pay it off overnight or they're in a rush to get it done with very quickly. But for most of us, it's a very long journey. So how long would you say it took you to kind of go from, you know, in the beginning with the debt you had to the point where you were able to pay it off? It, it took a, a while. I mean, um graduated at 22 and then I'd say – Gosh, I don't remember the exact age, but it definitely was a few years. I'd say it, we weren't really debt debt free in, until maybe like like thirty, you know. So it took a while to um, you know save and to make that happen. Definitely wasn't overnight. Yeah, for sure. It's a it's it's, it's a journey, yeah, but it's I think it's worthwhile once you get to the end of that. It's probably one of the the best feelings to make that final payment and get that over with. Right, and kind of to go back to my name, Journey to Launch, you actually brought up a good point with the whole, you know, referencing that it's a journey. Part of the reason why the name really resonated with me when I thought of it was that 
you know, this is life is a constant journey, right? And so finances, improving them, it's not, like you said, going to happen overnight. And sometimes, you know, you're going to take some steps forward and you're going to take some steps back. But it's all about the lessons you learn on your journey and how you you keep moving forward. And so that's also one of the things I like to promote or say a lot is that, you know, you're not necessarily, you can't compare your journey to anyone else's. Everyone's journey is different. And, you know, if you, you know, some people look at the number of that 85000 that I saved and some people are inspired by it and some people are just like, maybe discouraged and say, well, obviously, like, that's way more than, like, I can ever do. And and while, like, that's not my point to put it out to, like, brag, it's more of showing you that no matter what your income is, so obviously we're a dual-income household. We live in New York City, so we have a certain income to allow us to do that, but we also save almost up to 50% of our take-home mm-hmm. pay. So our savings is not without um, sacrifice, right? And so anyone, whether you're making, you know, 60, 50, 100, Thousand, like maybe you won't be able to save, you know, as much as we did, but you can save something. There is a way to then optimize your finances. So that's part of the whole journey is that each everyone's journey is different, um, and it all depends on where you start. And you can't really, you can't really um, compare yourself to anyone else. That's a really good point. I think, especially with there's so much, you know, activity on social media, it's so easy to try to compare yourself to others. And I think that's a really good point you made that everyone's journey is, you know, it's unique to them. And, you know, everyone moves at their own pace. So I think that was right. a really good point. And um, I also wanted to ask you, was there anything else you'd uh, kind of like to add? Uh, we're kind of wrapping up the week on debt discussions here. Was there anything else that uh, you'd like to add on that? Um, you know, I'd say that, you know, depending on where you are on your journey, like if you're just starting out, if you're in the middle, you're kind of further along or you're more advanced, um, that, Again, you have to be realistic with your goals. So with the debt part of things, um, you know, if you – like the first step to paying off debt is to make a commitment that you're not going to further accumulate debt, right? So if you find yourself still spending on your credit cards and still every month accumulating more debt, like you cannot pay off your credit card debt or your you know, and your minimum payments for your other debts, then there's an issue, obviously, with maybe the way you're budgeting or if maybe, some people are not even budgeting, right? They try to skip over that whole step because it seems yeah. confusing and overwhelming. But I would say that even for me, even to make the jump to save as much as we did, we had to budget. We had to create a plan. So whether, you know, maybe you don't want to call it a budget because you feel you don't like that name, you know, call it a spending plan, call it, I like to say freedom plan, call, but you need to call it something. You need to do something so you can track what you're spending. And that that was one of the major biggest things that we were able to do the, to up our savings rate. And in, in this case, if you're focused on debt payoff, you, you're going to need to create a plan about where your money is going and how you want to spend it. Oh, thank you. That's, that's a really good point. Very good point because I think there is a lot of planning that's necessary. And uh, that's probably the biggest hurdle to even getting started on the whole journey is starting a, a budget or like you said, like a freedom uh, plan to kind of get the ball rolling and uh, kind of move in the right direction. Right. So, so thank you. I appreciate your time. I don't want to hold you up any longer. Um, is there any other information you'd like to share on where people can find you, uh, any projects thing, or things you have going on right now? Sure. So I'm. you can find me on all social media as Journey to Launch. So that's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I also have a Facebook group if you want to get to know me better, if you want to join a few brave journeyers, because that's what I call my people who, who are on this mm-hmm. journey with me. I call them journeyers. So if you want, you can join the Facebook group. Um, you can just go to journeytolaunch.com forward slash community. Or uh, if you just go to Facebook and type in Journey to Launch, the group should come up. And I'm very responsive if you have any questions. I am also um, launching a podcast in a few weeks. I'm hoping it be out by the end of July or August, so stay tuned for that. And, yeah, that's how you can find me. Oh, yeah, it's really exciting news about the podcast. I wish you best of luck on that. Thank you. And you've encouraged me. Like, I want to learn more about this platform, so I'm going to do some more research about it because it seems pretty cool. So you maybe can find me on Journey to Launch here, too. <laughs> maybe I'll create a station. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully soon. And I can uh, also recommend uh, on Instagram, you do, uh, I think, a weekly live stream as well. Oh, yeah. So I try to go weekly. Um, you know, I don't have a set day. I know that's bad. But I try to go weekly on um, live on Instagram. And so if you follow my Instagram and, you know, you'll be able to like be notified when I'm going live. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, cause I personally have, have joined it a few times, and uh, I think it's a really great way to kind of get to know you and understand um, your journey and what you have going on. So I highly recommend that to anyone who's uh, who's on Instagram. That they go follow Journey to Launch and uh, look out for that live stream. All right, thanks. Sam. This encourages me to do it more, so I'll try to do it more often. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I think you should. <laughs> so, uh, Jamila, thanks again for your time. I really appreciate it. And, um, Everyone, please uh, check out uh, Jamila's website, Journey to Launch, and follow her on you know all the social media platforms she mentioned uh, earlier. So uh, thanks again, and I uh, hope to have a chance to interview you again uh, sometime in the future. Sure. All right. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Thanks again to Jamila from journeytolaunch.com. I really appreciate her taking some of her time to kind of just sit here with us and share a little bit of her story. One of the things that Jamila said that stood out to me the most was that everyone's journey is unique. And I think that statement is so important, especially in the time that we live in where it's so easy to compare yourself to others. Everyone's lives and situations are unique and different, and it's not fair to yourself or to others to try to compare uh, one struggle to the next or one set of goals or accomplishments to the next. Especially when it comes to your financial life, it's important to set your own personal goals based on what's important to you and work on those goals in a timeline that is most conducive to you achieving them and living a healthy and sane life. So thanks, Jamila, for that insightful comment, along with many others that you made uh, throughout the course of that interview. And I would highly recommend that all of you visit her website, journeytolaunch.com. I think you'll find a lot of really good information there. And I think it's worthwhile just checking it out and subscribing, following along with what she has going on. I'm very excited to check out her podcast once it launches. And maybe in the meantime, she'll be joining us sometime soon here on Anchor. Also remember to give Journey to Launch a follow on Twitter and Instagram and also to search for Journey to Launch on Facebook. As always, thanks for taking some time out of your day to listen to what we have going on here. I hope you will continue to come back and follow along with what's new here on Popcorn Finance. Hey, you're listening to Popcorn Finance on Anchor. All right, so I'm going to wrap up for this Friday, but I just want to say thank you to everyone who took some time out of their day to listen to the station, to uh, leave a pause, to uh, leave any feedback. And also thank you to the, the new subscribers, people who hit that favorite button today. I appreciate you uh, joining in on uh, what we're doing here and hope you enjoyed and continue to come back. And also a really big thank you to Jamila over at journeytolaunch.com uh, for her time today for our interview. Uh, it was a really, uh, really fun time. And I think she had a lot of good insight and a lot of good information for people out there looking to start their finance journey. So now that she's part of the Anchor community, make sure you stop over there, favorite her station, and uh, check out what she has going on. I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully, with uh, some more content and some more information to wrap up this week on debt. Thanks for joining me here on Popcorn Finance. If you like what you've been hearing, please don't forget to favorite the station. To find out more information or keep up on what's new, visit popcornfinance.com. Or you can follow us on Twitter at Popcorn Finance and on Instagram at Pop Finance. Thanks for listening and have an amazing day.